Uzbekistan. The country which was open for tourists just recently and of course I had to visit it and see it myself. We will start our journey with the capital of the country, Tashkent. Together with my local friend, I walk around, visiting unusual places and sharing my honest impressions. I'm so sad. And also, I will talk to an American expert about the reality of living in Uzbekistan. It's going to be super interesting, so let's get it started. We decided to start our day in Tashkent with going to a breakfast club, which one of our friends organized. So we decided to go to a breakfast, and here there is a big meetup of Russian experts here. And guess whom I met? Slava from Russian Plus and Konstantin from Inside Russia. And here is my trail buddy, Natasha. Are you excited to explore Uzbekistan? Yeah, it's really excited. Actually, Konstantin created this club, and I think it's just an amazing idea where people can find friends in other countries. Happy I was surprised seeing an American in this club, so I just had to take an interview from him. Here we were chatting with Daniel from New York, who lives here in Tashkent right now, and we were discussing drawbacks and benefits of the city about the life here. Daniel, could you please share your impressions? Okay, yes, thank you. What a positive to live here uh, in Tashkent and Uzbekistan. The aura is very good. You just feel good, whether you're in Tashkent or in Uzbekistan in general. And it's a marked change from when I was here about 11 years ago. Uh, at that time, it was uh, a different system, and it was much more controlled and closed. And uh, since the new president took over, which is probably about six years ago, you've seen the changes. Uh, I came seven years ago and then six years ago, and just in that one year since the president took over, the changes were astronomical. I never saw such big changes in such a short time. Wow. And places like this coffee shop, I don't know, this one may have existed, but now you see coffee shops on every street. That didn't exist. There was one maybe every mile or two miles. Wow. Uh, a lot more business, a lot more restaurants, a lot more street life, a lot more energy here. Uh, and there's a big youth bulge, so you feel a lot of the energy of the youth. Uh, and since the, the country op only opened up five years ago, there's a lot of great opportunities here to do a lot of things that were done in the rest of the world before, but are still uh, uh, doing here and necessary to do. Uh, another thing I would say is that, as generally in Central Asia, the people are extremely friendly. They're not xenophobic against foreigners, and that's regardless of where you go, pretty much anywhere in the region, in my experience, very safe. I would say the drawbacks are really two. The first is the amount of smoking. So the smoking is everywhere and you, you can't go to a bar or a club anywhere without just being overwhelmed by the smoke and even in restaurants and, and things like that and some of them. And the second thing related to that would be uh, the emphasis on the car. So most of the world is moving away, even the US, where I'm from, which is car centric, mm -hmm. is trying, it understands that focusing so much on the car is a mistake and the developing mass transit and all of this kind of stuff. But here, as in Central Asia in general, there's just too many cars on the street. The driving, it's difficult as a pedestrian uh, to walk. Uh, there's sometimes the sidewalks don't exist or they're not good. And it creates a ton of air pollution. So I do know they're doing a very good thing. They're expanding the Tashkent metro system. But in the outer regions, I would also like to see them in the inner regions expand as well. So that's basically my my two cents as we say. Thank you so Thank much. You. It was very yes. interesting. Thank you. So I on the way right now to meet my local friend Veronica and while walking I decide to share my first impressions of Tashkent. One of the first things that immediately caught my eye is that the, the roads are quite wide here, prospects and such. There are a lot of cars, which I didn't expect. Uh, I even have an impression that this city is mostly for car owners. And maybe not like to buy, but still quite a lot of cars. Also, it's very interesting seeing the combination of languages. For example, there are signs of some 
shops or cafes sometimes they combine in local language in Russian and in English and I don't know it looks so interesting to me just the look of all the signs even though Uzbekistan is a Muslim country here in Tashkent not all women are wearing scarves not all of them are covered with them I think even most people are not I would say 60 65 percentage maybe even 70 percentage of girls especially young girls of my age they're not wearing scarves and as a blonde woman here in the streets I definitely get some unnecessary attention from the men which obviously I don't like for example just few minutes before I started this video I was walking crossing the road and few local men just start screaming me something from the car laughing like I definitely don't like it also I would say that some local men stare at me maybe just you know cultural thing that you can stare a woman like that I don't know to be honest but I'm trying not to notice it at all and if somebody's gonna talk to me I would say I'm married what I'm usually doing in the countries like that by the way be prepared that there are no seat belts in the taxi and you can find them only in the business class taxis Let me introduce now Veronica, my local friend here. <laughs> it's actually so interesting how we met. We met in Turkey for the first time. Yeah. I've been following you for like two years on Instagram. <laughs> and because she's also a blogger. And by the way, she is a startup co-founder, uh, Boardless. So if you would like to share your story about studying abroad, visit her website and check it out. Yes. <laughs> and when she visited Istanbul, where I was living, I'm like, hey, Veronica, I'm also a YouTuber. I'm like, not also, but I'm also a blogger. Like, would you like to have a coffee? And yeah, that's how we met. Yeah. And actually, Veronica was born in Tashkent, the capital. And I was thinking it would be interesting to discuss what's life, real life look like here, yeah. not as media showing us. Sure. So I will give a little disclaimer <laughs> that I have not lived here since 2015 yes. when I went to college and could you please tell us a little bit about your childhood how you were born here how you were growing here like school yeah. mentality and etc sure yeah so I'm 25 so I was born in 1997 I live in a bit far from the center of the city so it was a very like small communal area with not many things around so now when I came back, I'm like, wow, this became much more developed. There's like coffee shops and supermarkets, which we didn't really have. I am not Uzbek, I'm half Russian, half Korean. So interesting. And I speak only Russian, mm -hmm. um, which many people get surprised by. Mm -hmm. And my mom speaks only Russian. And I went to like Russian speaking school. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was like one school, but there was a English, not the Uzbek department and the mm -hmm. Russian one. So I went to Russian one. Mm -hmm. We were just discussing that my mom asked me not to walk alone in Tashkent and when I told this to Veronica, she said, yeah, I'm probably <laughs> she's right and your mom saying the same to you, right? Yeah, yeah, so I'm the only child, so <laughs> I have a very protective parent for obvious reasons and it is, again, I haven't been here for a while, but uh, when I was a teenager, there was definitely a lot of issues with safety. I have not had very traumatic experiences, but I did have... Like the cat calling, like attention, oh, yeah. occasional touching, occasional no, like, no. you know, a few things here and there. I don't think I was ever like threatened from my life, mm -hmm. but a few moments were very uncomfortable. Uh, but still, I would not walk around alone. I would not get in the non Yandex taxi cab. Mm -hmm. uh, clothing wise, in the summer, I remember being told to like cover that up a little bit. Okay. I still wouldn't because it's hot. So I'm sorry, I would yeah. wear shorts. Uh, but definitely there's stairs and you feel slightly uncomfortable. What should be improved the most for the city? Because we discussed like the yeah. biggest drawback for you. Uh, so I will quote my mom because she actually lives here and she works at a job and she always complains about public transport. The bus is terrible. First of all, it never comes on time. There is no like schedule where you know you can like look up and know okay mm -hmm. the bus will come at this time maybe plus minus five minutes. Mm -hmm. It just comes whenever it wants to so you have to so wait sad. a long time. Then there is no AC, so in the summer, summer gets really hot here, really, really, really hot. 
there is no AC and there's so many people stuffed in this one bus or mashutka. So that whole infrastructure needs to be improved. And in my personal experience, it got pretty dirty, especially mm-hmm. the dust. Mm-hmm. Um, like in my area, it's very, very dusty and the mm-hmm. air doesn't feel particularly clean. Mm-hmm. Like if you breathe, yes. I don't think it feels fresh even in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, nature, <laughs> please protect our nature. Mm-hmm. I personally struggled with a few like services. Like we don't have PayPal here, mm-hmm. I think. We don't have Stripe. We like TikTok is blocked, which is oh my gosh! I've seen like yesterday. I yeah. wanted to like uh, I call it thirty minutes of stupidity when you just cross <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. I wanted to do it, and then it was blocked. I'm like, why? Yeah, and then yeah. I realized that it's blocked in the country. Yeah, yeah, it is blocked. The country needs time to develop, mm-hmm. and I want things to happen faster. Yes, like I'm 25. Like I need. I want to start off in a country that has more resources for me to work with. Yeah, like, imagine. I don't want to wait for us to mm-hmm. bring things. You know, like Yandex Taxi yeah. only came a couple years ago while, like, in US or in Abu Dhabi, it was there, like, maybe the, uh, many yeah, years Uber. ago. So, like, I want to mm-hmm. be in a place where, which has all the layer of things that you need to build something yeah, out of it. Have a comfortable life. I'll yeah, say. yeah. Comfortable life, like, the resources, the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Later, we went for a walk to explore the city, and I was amazed by the solid architecture of the buildings. And worth to say, it's quite different from the Russian one. But what I was really shocked about is seeing the amount of garbage on the streets. Like, I'm so sad. Right now we are going to the most popular park here in the city, which kind of considered a city center, but in fact there is no city city center in old Tashkent, which actually very interesting for me to hear. But I noticed this quite interesting building. This is Hotel Uzbekistan, which is considered to be the most popular hotel here in the city. It's kind of look Soviet, but very unique architecture, I would say. We are in Amir Timur Square, which is, it used to be one of the centers. Mm-hmm. I know you said there's no center center, but when I was little, this mm-hmm. is the place where they would take us on like school tours okay. or even with friends, you would come here. Mm-hmm. It's very pretty. Sometimes there's like a little fountain there. Yeah. Uh, and this is a very famous monument of Amir Timur. Who is this? Who is kind of considered like the founder of the country. Wow. Uh, cool. I think he's mostly famous for some military yeah. actions he's done. Mm. I am very bad at history, so I will not try to explain. <laughs> uh, but this is the guy you learn about in history books. And what I noticed, it's clean. Yeah. Like you don't see garbage here, like in the other parts of the city. Yeah, there's actually two trash cans yes, within like, like two meters take a away look. from us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned that when you used to live here, there were no like trash banks much. Not many, and we never recycled, so I'm happy to see. I think this is like different yeah. garbage for yeah, different types. they're trying. So they are trying. There's many of them that are yeah. very green. Yeah, this area is so clean and it gets very lively at night. Mm-hmm. And then if you walk like that way, there is street with a bunch of art and little shops and cafes. Oh, that's so nice. Shall we go there? Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty surprised to see many coffee shops and even little like carts because what I remember is we used to be a very tea culture. We would drink tea all the time, even in summer when it's like 40 degrees hot, you would always drink tea. But coffee wasn't a thing so much, but now there's like three shops in like 100 meter radius. We like to put sugar in the tea. So yeah, last time we ate plov and got like green tea and it came with sugar. Then we asked to remove the sugar. They still brought us sugar, <laughs> which is very funny. Uh, but yeah, tea here is a thing. Any time, any day, any season, you drink a lot of tea. Behind <laughs> you. What's that? Oh God, wow. We're gonna, we're gonna try? No? Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. Here are some installations of dolphins. Lovely. My friends and I came to Tashkent City. It's an absolutely new district here in Tashkent. And here they built a lot of skyscrapers, which you can see 
like just behind me, that building, here they already did it. Um, I think it's very expensive one and accommodation here gonna be pricey. But the government is trying to create the business capital of Uzbekistan, so soon they're gonna be even more skyscrapers. Oh, yeah. And as you see, locals also really like it. When you're in Uzbekistan, seats are like that. Of course, cup of tea. How do you feel in Dubai? Right now we came to another interesting place here in the city called Magic City and as you can see there is Pepsi logotype everywhere and I don't know what's the thing about this but in Tashkent you can see Pepsi everywhere it's much more popular than Cola here for sure there are a lot of logotypes here for example if we just go here look, look next to the lights Pepsi, Pepsi everywhere, like so interesting. I talked with Veronica about this and she said, oh, probably it's paid very well here, <laughs> Pepsi. I don't know, but that's the thing. It's like kind of an open shopping mall or there's also cafe, cinema. So well, I see, for now it looks quite pretty and it definitely looks like Disneyland, Disneyland, Pepsi Disneyland. Well, something new. To be honest, I'm not a big fan. It's for me, it's very artificial, and it looks like outlet of some I don't know clothes, magazine uh, shops, and some cafe. So it reminds me of something like that. What do you think? Well, you know, I didn't live in Moscow for a long time, mm -hmm. so I'm not used to such uh, places. Uh, this street, though, reminds me of Nikolska Street mm -hmm. in Moscow. So probably for people who travel a lot, it's it's like like in any European city, yeah. like in Moscow. But I see there are so many local people who are considering that it is something new and unique. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to Magic City and I have mixed feelings mm -hmm. because it's a weird copy of a Disneyland. Where mm -hmm. like it's very pretty. And I do think for people who, you know, like never went abroad, it's really fun to have something yes. like this in the city. Like people were so happy, they were in kids and even like old women would take pictures, which was so wholesome. Mm -hmm. Um, but as a spoiled person who has been to many places, it's weird to me yes. that they try to like, copy it. Mm -hmm. And also because I know that Uzbekistan has such rich um, the culture and architecture. If mm -hmm. you were to go to Samarkand, it's so beautiful, so unique that mm -hmm. I wish they've done more of like authentic buildings okay. in the city versus try to mimic some of the developed cities like Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, on that day, I couldn't show you the most important attraction of the city, Chorsu Bazaar. It's an open-air market where you can find lots of local food, some stuff, spices and etc. But unfortunately, when I've been there, it was a big snowfall and it was very cold, so it wasn't that enjoyable to walk there a lot. In the evening, we met with our friends and came to a very atmospheric restaurant to test local food. For dinner, we came to a very authentic restaurant called Caravan. Here it feels like you're back in Uzbekistan for like, I don't know, centuries ago. Super atmospheric, I love it. And there you can try some local dishes. I'm gonna try either this, either this one. I have no idea what is this, but it looks okay. <laughs> I suppose we will try. For starters, we took bread, of course, dalma, it's a vine leaves with a lamb, also flat bread with some cheese and herbs, and local variety of dumplings with meat. Here I take in shufpil dog, it's meat with some vegetables. Uh, my dish seemed to be quite healthy, there are not many spices, so it's like baked meat with some vegetables which I actually quite like. Uh, the sauce, the red one though, it's quite mm, unusual. 
quite spicy, not spicy, but there are some spices. Uh, interesting combination. I don't think this is my kind of dishes, but overall I like it. What I ordered is a traditional Uzbek dish. It's called norin. Mm -hmm. And basically it's finely sliced uh, pieces of pasta mm -hmm. and also slices of horse meat. Uh, mm. Yeah, horse meat. And it comes with a bowl of clear soup. Yes, very good. Dish barma. It is horse meat and Lamb some ribs. Known as kazan and, uh, potatoes and also really uh, wide uh, noodles. <laughs> and I wanted to try something authentic, something mm. from Uzbekistan. But the guys told me that this dish is originally from Kazakhstan. So anyway, trying uh, many different cuisines. Mm. Uh, I tried Natasha's horse. <laughs> They add some flavors in this meat and it's very unusual taste, remind me of lamb or maybe beef actually, uh, soft and yeah, I don't think I would try it like just the full dish but the piece of it was nice. This is a uh, basic soup called shurpa, it's lamb and this is kazan kebab, it's also lamb. The thing is, uh, Uzbek food is very basic, it's easy, easy to make because uh, Uzbeks naturally are peasants and when they work in the field they have, you know, obviously sheep, they can eat a lamb and uh, that's it. So they have a little bit of veggies, potatoes, you know, lamb and boom, they make this very simple dish but this is absolutely incredibly tasty. Overall, tasting local food is the best way to learn more about the culture and so far I really like Uzbek culture. Yes. It was taken from Bukhara to here. Oh my god. Just look at this. Uh, Veronica, what, what is unique about Uzbekistan? Can you share please? Yeah, so I think the unique thing that speaks to me because I am I like to think I'm very open-minded and mm -hmm. I like to interact with different cultures and it's the fact that Uzbekistan is very diverse. Uh, I don't think people realize that. There's so many, well, first of all, of course, there's Uzbeks, there's a lot of Russians, there's so many Koreans. <laughs> I hear stories that actually Stalin deported a part of uh, Russian Koreans yeah. uh, to Uzbekistan because Russia. he was afraid of something, there was some like political tension, so that's why many people are living here. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of Koreans. I would say uh, now maybe a little bit less because some went back to Korea, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's how like my mom ended up here. Well, not directly, but the descendants and a bunch of my friends. So yeah, when I was growing up, there were so many Koreans, there were Russians, there were Uzbeks, there were Kazakhs, there were Uyghurs. Um, like just so many, yeah, Ukrainians, mm -hmm. there were so many different nationalities and people look very differently, you know, like you're mm -hmm. blonde, then like there's Asian people, there's more dark skinned people. And even though I only speak Russian, I feel like I was much more tolerant to other cultures. That's good. Um, which really helped me in life because now I live in different places and I know how to, mm -hmm. you know, be respectful and how to be accepting. And the last thing what we wanted to discuss is people. Yes. I They're so people. nice here. Yeah, people are really, really, really nice. And I know probably every person would say that people from his or her country are nice, but Uzbek people are really welcoming. And like, so welcoming. you know, in Russian we say гостеприимство, yeah. which is like hospitality. hospitality, exactly. This is something we're very known for and it's very well deserved. So I highly recommend to like interact with the locals, uh, just make yes. small conversations. You will feel so welcomed. People will always help you out. If you're lost, so if you need true. something. Like we, uh, we've yeah. been lost, like map showed wrongly and we didn't right. have internet when we were buying a SIM card. Mm. And the lady, we just asked a lady in the sh small grocery and she went outside yeah. to like to show us exactly, to tell us a few times where yeah. to go. Yeah. People are People, so friendly. Yeah, they'll go out of their way to help you. And they're also like just as friendly to foreigners. Mm -hmm. We also love seeing foreigners. Like we, I think up until recently we didn't have that many tourists. I think mm -hmm. now there's a bit more. So people love like trying to speak English and like even they want to take a picture with you. So yeah, like just try to interact with them and you will feel very, very welcome. Thank you so much You're for welcome. such a great interview. We all love it. I'm sure we all love it. Yeah, I hope so, you come visit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so even though maybe Tashkent is not that popular, but it's still worth visiting at least a day here before yeah. going to another place. For sure, for sure. Well, guys, don't forget to follow Veronica on social media and check out your startup. <laughs>
Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. Well, our journey around Uzbekistan has just started. In the next video, we're gonna visit two beautiful Asian towns, Samarkand and Bukhara. We'll talk with the locals, try lots of delicious food, and even check out the best ski resort in the country, of course with lots of funny stories. So follow my channel and let's explore Uzbekistan and the whole world together. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.